Good morning, Sally. How are you today? I'm feeling very happy. <laughs> That's good. Why are you feeling happy? Because the sun is out, life is good, and it just fills me with so much joy. I'm living in the moment. And we're in the 20s, aren't we? Woohoo! 21 today down here too. Yeah, the blossoms are the Spring sky has is run. blue. Yeah. yeah. Life is good. Thank goodness. I'm, I'm over winter. Totally. <laughs> It wasn't as bad as it has been in, in other years, but yeah, I'm definitely out of it. We can stop cracking the sads now, Harry. We can start blooming. Yeah. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about happiness, mm -hmm. that elusive human goal that particularly the Americans are obsessed about. We're not so obsessed about it here, but you know, there's happy this and happy that and happy everything over there. But you know, as far as I know that the, this whole field of positive psychology was launched by a guy called Martin Seligman. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a book called Authentic Happy. And it's a, it's a really big deal because if we look at the stats, so these stats are from a guy called, you probably haven't heard of, he's called Tal Ben Shahar. And he's a professor at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a book called Happier. And more people, more students attend his courses at Harvard than anybody else. That's incredible, Harry. That's um, that's huge. And he's got some stats in his book, and I'll just read them out. They're really interesting. So the U.S. now has rates of depression that are ten times the rate that they were in the sixties. Ten times. Mm. In age of onset, has has dropped from twenty nine and a half to fourteen and a half. Fourteen and a half. So, and this is an American. This is not an American characteristic. In the UK, in 1957, 52 percent of people reported being very happy, and that had dropped to 36 percent by 2005. Ooh. You see the same thing here. You know, huh? people get richer, they got more material things, and their happiness goes down. Yeah, it's just stuff. It doesn't bring happiness. It's been my mantra forever. Money does not bring happiness. Yeah. Well, a certain level up to survival does and then thereafter not. Yeah, because I had a stat somewhere here that said for people to, to be sort of in a happy zone, they need about 75 grand. Mm. It takes the annual salary to put a smile on the average person's face. So yeah. it just takes the stress off. With the you know your ongoing cost of living because cost of living is so expensive. So yes, you need a certain amount to live a, a certain lifestyle, but you know, do we really need the excesses? Do you know lots of people that are happy, Sally? To be perfectly honest, on a scale of happiness, you know, okay, but no, not extremely happy, not at all, not at all. Yeah. How about you? Some, some, but they, you actually have to work at it, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I've been actually entitled today, The Art of Happiness, The Choice is Yours, because it comes down to choice, everything. Oh, I like that, The Art of Happiness. Yes, I, know. I really got excited about this topic because happiness is something that I have actually been working on since my divorce because, you know, I had to review my life and have a look at, <laughs> what was going on and I'm actually happier now than I ever have been it's because mm -hmm. I've actually aligned my path purpose and direction with joy you know aligning my passion with with my work and it just brings me happiness it just and we did, working and with we did, you it just we did, me joy <laughs> and we did some serious homework in Hawaii as I recall <laughs> yeah but how much fun is that because fun yeah. links in extremely yeah. well with happiness it's it's the best yeah. present, really is having some fun good-hearted fun i had some fun on the weekend and you know have fun yeah. most days yeah yeah i had fun on the weekend it's a good time so i mean you might have heard the american you might have heard of the american philosopher and writer thoreau have you ever heard mm -hmm. of thoreau mm -hmm. so he described he, he the most famous quote from him is that most people lead lives of quiet desperation. Mm. So they rock up to work, they look grey on Monday morning, they get happy on Friday because they can leave. Yep. They have these, like in the town I live, they have yeah. these golden handcuffs. Uh, which are called neck. Commonwealth Government Superannuation. And they, oh, yes. Yeah. Mm. Couldn't do it. <laughs> Couldn't no. do it. 
No, no way. And I actually wrote down my own definition um, of what I felt happiness is. So happiness mm -hmm. to me is finding a direction in my life that brings me joy and passion and allowing myself to live in the present moment, not get caught up with memories of the past or getting anxious or worried about the future. There mm. you go. It's just living in the That's now. good. That's really good. Um, so there was a 1996 study um, done by a couple of guys called Lykens and Telegon. I think it was Swedish, mm -hmm. European. And they reckoned that 50% of happiness was determined by your genes. 10% mm. oh, was determined by your life circumstance and 40% was driven by your activities. Yep. Obviously, you know, for individuals that can change a bit, but so, you know, the key thing is you, you can change your level of ha happiness by what you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I read those stats too and I, I was genes, behaviours and life circumstances. And as I say, it comes down to choice. It absolutely comes down to choice. But part of that, the choice is also having confidence in yourself, confidence, a healthy self-esteem so that you, you can dare to be different and be okay about it. Because sometimes to be happy, well, a lot of times you have to put up boundaries and learn to say no. I think that's really a big part of being happy is that you're not doing things that you it doesn't bring your soul satisfaction. Of course, you've got responsibilities and commitments, but putting in those boundaries and saying, actually, no, I don't want to go out for that dinner because <laughs> it's just it's not going to fuel my soul. And so mm -hmm. having the confidence in yourself to say no is a big thing. And, you know, it's that's something that I was reading about for kids. Oh, which reminds me, I love this book. I, there was a whole series of them when I'm feeling happy. And, you know, it was... Oh. I used to read it to my kids all the time, but it was things about, you know, what makes you happy. Um, feeling happy is such a fantastic feeling. It makes me feel good about the way I look and the person I am. How cute. Like, you know, particular happiness in kids, it's so important. So and as a mum, you know, Tal ben says that it's really important to create this circle of happiness in your family. Mm. And you do that with unconditional love. Mm. Not like the mum yesterday who told me that her stepdaughter came back in tears last week because she'd eaten too many olives at her mother's house and the mother tore strips off her because she didn't have enough olives for the, for the meal she had planned to cook. Mm. That is not a definition of unconditional love. No, it's, it's, it's bit, uh, when I was reading about with kids, it's, you know, spending quality time with them, just, you know, a, a cuddle on the couch or something. It doesn't have to be hours. Um, but what was the other thing? Um, quality time and, and making the kids feel valuable, that they're a valued part of the family, you know, and that their life is valuable and that they're valued by their parents, you know, just really loved. Yeah, and like... Uh, you and Maggie used to do this quite a bit, as I remember, but one of my grandsons loved doing, loves doing the floss. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so last night I asked him to do the floss because he loves doing it so much. And he's so good. His hips wiggle. Oh, my goodness. It's so good. It's so hard <laughs> to do. I, can just I know, but he's got it. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I mean, one of my things that I... Oh, put down around being happy is yes, having that confidence in yourself and ability to say no, putting in the healthy boundaries, you know, boosting up your self esteem and uh, having fun in your life is so important. It's so important. So I did a little model that it's did not. Did you? Well, we've both done models. That's good. Yours is always awesome, but anyway, mine starts. Off I got inspired today. I, got, I did get inspired. Yeah. But I'd love to hear your model. Okay, dokie. All righty. It's not in palette, but it's okay. So first of all, in our three circles, I'll just show you quickly, but I'll go through it. We've got fun, oh. laugh more, don't sweat the small stuff, find, find pleasure in the simple things. And then if you boost up your confidence in yourself and your direction and trust and believe or dare to be different, you're ultimately going to be more attractive. People are drawn to you and, and want to yeah. hang out with your company. And then when you've got yeah. that boost in your confidence and you've put in those healthy boundaries where you where it's okay to say no and put yourself 
first, you know, and be specific about where you spend your time and energy, well, then you're going to, overall, your energy is going to improve because you're not wasting and being drained or, as an old friend said to me, cheese suckers, you know, people that drain your energy and you're doing Mm. things that aren't serving you. Then ultimately, Mm. when you've got those healthy boundaries in place and you're having way more fun, you're going to be less stressed and you're going to sleep better. You're going to sleep better at night and sleep is so important such a healing thing to do it's resetting Mm. the soul it's turning the mind off it's you know all the benefits of sleep Mm. regenerating Mm. the body ready for the next day so when you've got the boundaries you've got more fun and much more confident overall you're a lot happier it's true yeah talking about sleep i had somebody chatting to them yesterday and they said they'd looked up dispensers meditation work um, because they they were waking up every night and they did joe's um, meditation and i'm just going to raise my chair and then they're sleeping really well yeah that's fantastic fantastic his meditations are awesome they're just awesome awesome so what's your model harry so my model is is kind of a bit like yours i just just like to go back to to something that you said about setting boundaries and being mm-hmm. confident to do that. Well, the, a prerequisite for that is understanding who you are. Mm, very. Yeah, well, once you've discovered who you are, then that falls into place. And of course, that's not set into stone. But So my first one is love. Love unconditionally. Love yourself mm. and others unconditionally. And the second one was live your life fully. You know, do the work you love. Play play well, play hard, and follow your dreams. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. And if you do those two things together, you're going to attract lots of positive energy and people to you. And then, very simply, laugh every day. Oh, super important. I you love to Laugh them. every day. And if you do that, you'll amplify the joy. And um, that will, you know, lift you to a higher level of happiness, allow you to access the art of happiness. Yeah, it's beautiful, so Harry. Beautiful. And my three, my three steps, and again, these are not my original thoughts. They're from Tal Ben Shahar. So these are three questions to ask yourself. What gives me meaning? Mm. What's meaningful to me? What gives me pleasure? And then what are my strengths? And if you get the answers for each of you for those three questions, that'll give you some goalposts mm. to build on to get you to a happier life. And there's a guy, uh, there's American psychology professor Todd Cashman, and he has he has six tips. And I'm going to add one. So his six tips are: live in the moment. And you've talked about that. Mm-hmm. Be curious. Be curious. What? Well, be curious. Was that second one? Be curious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do something you love. Mm-hmm. Preferably your work. <laughs> but if not, just do something you love. Think about this. It can be a little thing. Where are you going? Mm. Touch on the shoulder. Mm. Hug. Um, nurture your relationships. They're important. Mm-hmm. Take care of your body. Yes. That's what you live in. And the last one we add to that is be grateful. You know, gratitude practice is really powerful. Yeah, super, super, super. It's underlying everything, isn't it? Oh, and that could be as, that could be as simple as, you know, the, I think it was established by a guy, a couple called Emons and McCulloch, and they said every night before sleep, write down at least five things that may made or make you happy. Mm-hmm. Whether it's one or five, I don't think it matters. But as, if you do that every day for thirty days, that's in my sleep. journal too. Your level of happiness, absolutely. Yeah. What brings yeah. you joy? Yeah, I love that. I had a few more um, little sort of bits of stats, but if you spend six to seven hours a day socialising, it gives you the highest level of levels of happiness. And by socialising, it in, in includes hanging out with your partner or hanging out with your family. But six to seven uh, hours a day, it's a lot, but it's, you know, hanging around people that you want to hang around with, you know, interacting with clients that bring you joy. You know, it's... Mm. Mm. Part of work because you're spending so much of your day with people that is, mm. you know, I really love my work because I love working with people and I find them mm. fascinating. Um, 10 is the number of friends it takes to give your well being a big boost. So, having 10 or more friends 
that you have regular contact with or, you know, keep in touch with or whatever. It might even just be Facebook following them and commenting or whatever, but keeping up um, around you or in, in your energy circle, I think. Um, where did I see the other? <laughs> Another good thing that kept you really happy was having regular sex. <laughs> it's, that always brings a smile onto my doll. <laughs> Now, here were some really interesting things. The three ages, which are called the happiest age, age 33, age 55, and in the 70s. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mid-50s tend to smile the most. In your early 30s, you, you have energy, wisdom, and money all at once before it all gets sucked dry with the kids down the track. But I thought that was interesting. And then once again, back in the 70s. So, Yeah. Interesting stuff. I, I remember the joy of having all the young kids at home. It's just magic. You've got your own little community. Yeah, and look, kids teach you so much, you know. So, yeah, it is, you know, it is. And, uh, but it's interesting. You talk about, you know, 10 people to have as friends. Um, I think, you know, if you just had one person who you could tell anything to, yep. that could change your life. Oh, I have that. Do you have that? Well, you've got that. Yeah, I do. I do. But I think a lot of men don't. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, women are very good communicators. Mm. <laughs> we let women it out. Connect. Let's not keep women it in. Connect. <laughs> so, women, women connect much better. Yeah. So my three little steps were um, slightly different to yours, but yeah. I put it in palette, but really. Good. Just to be happy in life. I entitled it. Number one, align your passions with your direction and path in life. So that's with your work, wherever you're going. Just make it yeah. tune with your passions. Two, be aware. Be aware of your feelings and do more of the things that bring you joy and put boundaries around your time and energy so you limit the things that drag you down. And mm. three is act now. Be more living in the present moment and let shit go that doesn't serve you. And, you know, turn mm. your mind off from tomorrow and, you know, of things that have happened in the past, but just live in the now. It mm. brings me so much more joy. That was probably one of the biggest things, letting go of the stress and worry about things that I can't control. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? And it's just brought me much more grounded and, and happier because I can only deal with what's on my plate today. And that's it. Yeah. Think, think and act at the same time. That's the phrase yeah. I've got around that. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've said that. That, that was a lifesaver for me, you know, because I used to worry about yep. stuff that I couldn't change. Right? Yeah. I was like, you know, I've got a presentation on the weekend. I'm doing a PowerPoint, but the venue doesn't have a projector. So how am I going to do do it? Well, just have to find one, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you found a very good one from the sounds of things too. I did. So, so this morning I went out and I smelled a blossom on an apricot tree. It was beautiful. Beautiful. There's lots of bees in the garden. Oh, yes, it's that time of year. I was going to say, that's the thing I had written down too. Just find joy in the simplest things. Smelling a rose. Oh, my goodness. You know, just the whole olfactory system. It's just, you know, I love freesias. And they, that brings me my heart so much joy. Or Daphne. Daphne's just been out. Absolutely oh, beautiful. That's somebody's name, isn't it, Daphne? It is, yes. I wonder if they were yeah. named after the flower. <laughs> so, so we, we planned, I'm, I was going through my phone to find this. We, I bought about 20 bulbs and it's a tiny little flower that it popped um, up out of the ground. This how beautiful is that? Look at the depth. It's about the size of your small fingernail. It's very delicate. Really? Jesus, that's yeah, tiny. tiny. It is tiny. But well, I think I bought 100 of them. So there's going to be 100 of them. Well, oh, of them. Wow. Well, yeah. I was walking the town on the weekend and all the daffodils are out. Just beautiful. Yeah. yeah whole season. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Mm. I love this topic, Harry. I love it because it's so important for everybody to sit with the happiness because it lets all the other stuff go. Yeah. It reduces yeah. the stress. It brings you joy and it makes your days worth living, you know? Just yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Having a laugh. Well, you have a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful day. Don't forget to laugh. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do that often, and I love your bow tie. Very smart. Very, yeah, very thank smart. You. Thank you. Very dapper. I haven't got the AirPods. I'm not sure about the AirPods. I'll put that under my bow tie. They don't come with a long enough cord, these things, from Apple. Yeah, well, I'm sure you can find an invention somewhere on the on the 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Help you out. Yeah. All right, darling. Well, we'll catch you next week. Really Absolutely. enjoy. Absolutely. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. Bye.